right, people are starting to roll in now. There may be, as always, people jumping in and out as we go. Folks, if you've just joined us, welcome, first of all. Um, I'll come on screen in very uh, few, a few moments uh, for you. Um, but you may be able to see me in the corner anyway at this moment. Uh, my name is Mark Collard and welcome. Um, I'm really glad that you're here. Uh, as we wait for these last few people to arrive, uh, in the chat room, enter two place names, a country where you live and a place you describe as paradise. And we've already solved the six cryptic clues. I clearly did not make them hard enough. And uh, you will get a copy of this recording and we'll be able to tell you what all those answers are. But they are in this order. Long underwear, feeling under the weather, which I hope you're not at the moment. Uh, one step forward, two steps back, a hole in one. Number five is high five. And the final one is ambiguous, ambiguous. So this is uh, our webinar. Uh, we call interactive exercises for online meetings and virtual conferences. And my name is Mark Collard. I'm gonna stop sharing now and go straight to uh, speak of you so that you can uh, see me. First of all, can I just say thank you for whatever it took for you to find time to sit in front of your screen, no matter how big or small it might be to, to be a part of this webinar. I really do appreciate it. Um, I am certainly not the first person to uh, invite people to be part of a webinar to share, um, but in my community, there is uh, a lot to be able to share when we have, for most of us, regarded as normal for people to turn up. And so suddenly there's this concept of, well, if people can't turn up and still wanting to build those relationships is important, then this was me wanting to share with you. So uh, as I've already shared, my name is Mark Collard. I work as an experiential trainer and author, and I direct a company called Playmio. Uh, we're all about creating powerful training workshops and resources that help people connect. That's it, that's all we do is just help people connect either through our training workshops, or through our online resources. And I've got a ton of that I wanna share with you today. And the purpose of this webinar, the reason you probably signed up, is to be able to share some of our favorite activities, exercises, games, whatever you wanna call them, that are suitable for a virtual or online setting. So maybe it's just that 30 second energizer, just to refocus people, energize them, to bring them back to a meeting. Or it's a classroom, where you would like to continue to build relationships. So we're gonna share some of those favorite activities that can do any and all of that. I've got a, a variety of those to share with you today. And I'm also gonna use some really simple props, if any at all. You know, most of what I'm gonna share with you doesn't need any props at all. Uh, and obviously most of us now are becoming very quickly uh, conversant in this online conferencing world. And Zoom is certainly a popular format. So I am going to provide uh, a little bit of context. First of all, that you have at least a general understanding of Zoom. Uh, right now, if you, you, you should all be mute, but when I do provide opportunities for you to speak, just manually unmute yourself so that we can hear you, or if you prefer, just use the chat room. And uh, one of my team, Lisa Laura, uh, is actually gonna be monitoring the chat room as we go through, because as you'd appreciate, I'm focused on wanting to present to you, I won't always be able to catch uh, the chat room. So I am gonna presume Zoom, and there are so many bells and whistles now with that software. I, I'm typically not going to use it. Uh, you could do breakout rooms. Uh, we could use annotations. Uh, we may use polls. There's a whole lot of stuff, but I'm gonna presume that for many of you, this is still new, and to be honest with you, this is my second hosting of a webinar. I've been involved with many other people's webinars over many years, but this is only the second time. So I come into this space going, ah, I'm still learning as well. And there's a few places where I'm actually gonna put out a call, call out for help, where it's like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. I wonder if you as a community know where we can find this thing, but I'll leave that till a little bit later on. So I'm using the context that you're somewhat familiar with Zoom, but I'm not gonna to use too many bells and whistles, presuming that a lot of you perhaps don't have access to that. And as more and more people arrive, uh, we did have a, a very quick oversubscription for this particular webinar. Um, you don't have to do anything. If you just want to sit in here and just chill for the next hour, uh, be my guest. Uh, we'll certainly uh, entertain you. There'll be some real fun. But I know for many of you, you'll want to lean in as well. 
and uh, it would be my pleasure to invite you to volunteer to participate at whatever level works for you. So uh, keep that in mind as we go through. Now, before we get stuck into the activities, um, a quick overview. Uh, first of all, I wanna give you some context. Now, beyond just the fact that we're all online and all located throughout the world in remote places, I wanna give some context about why inviting people to interact online is so important. Uh, I, I don't wanna take that for granted. And for many of you, you might have this anecdotal understanding that this is a good idea, but I wanna really uh, root it in evidence-based or scientific understanding. So I'm gonna give you some philosophical and scientific frameworks behind that. There's a couple of screens. We won't spend any really very much time at all on screens, but there's a couple there I wanna share with you. Then we're gonna spend a good 40, 45 minutes easily on sharing as many activities as I can. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm not gonna to go to the full length of any of these activities. I wanna give you a flavor and you'll be able to fill in the gaps and, 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 and uh, adapt them to your own purposes for your own setting. So I hope we get through at least four, five or six different activities. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you where you can get access to over 50, almost 60 activities that are ideal for virtual environments. And then some resources, which is one of those things I want to share with you, those uh, 60 or so activities and a ton of other free things that would be of use to you uh, if you're starting to embrace this concept of what do I do to invite people to build connections in an online environment. So please stick around to the end because there's some really valuable resources there. I'm sure you're probably wondering, is this being recorded? Yes, I believe it is being recorded so that we will be able to send this to you uh, as a uh, link that you can then look at in a future reference completely free and feel free to share with others as well. If you feel that there are others in your network that might value anything that we have to share here. Okay, now, let me just uh, do some swapping of screens. I've given some context there for everybody. Um, let's now go back to this screen and move to my, oh, forgot about this one. This is me. Uh, to give some further context, and if you've never come across me or play me before, you already know what I look like, but that's what I look like in action somewhere in China some years ago. Uh, these are a few of my books. Most of my time is spent in a training context or I'm writing books, but most people know Playmio because of a massive online database that we've created online. Um, and with all the video tutorials that go along with that, I'll talk more about that later, but everything I'm sharing with you today, you'll have free access to, plus hundreds of other activities at the end of our session today. Two things I wanna share with you. Connection before content, is my first one. This is a phrase that I've borrowed from our good friends at We and Me. I'll give a shout out to them again at the end of this uh, webinar. To connect before content is a really valuable uh, concept, but it's now rooted in science because in a brief capsule of information, I can share with you the meta-analysis of many, many studies in this space have shown unequivocally that the most successful programs in the world, let me just stop there for a moment in that part of the sentence, the most successful programs in the world. What is a program? When we look at these studies, the scientific studies, it's anywhere where someone is responsible for the well-being of others, no matter where they are, face-to-face, -face, remote or otherwise. So the most successful programs in the world are those which intentionally develop trusting and healthy relationships from the start intentionally develop trusting relationships from the beginning. Now, when people turn up, they're in a classroom, they're in a meeting, wherever your program might be, perhaps in or outdoors, clearly the intentionality of helping that group build relationships to connect with one another will amplify the results of what you're trying to get done. It is equally important, and I would argue more important, now that we can't right now in the current crisis, actually turn up face to face. You still need to be intentional about inviting people to interact so that those relationships can actually still be built. So to connect before content is not just something that happens when it's face to face. It's in any context where you are responsible for the welfare of a group, students, staff, colleagues, friends, family, whoever. That's my first point. Second point, related to that, environment dictates performance. That just makes sense for anyone who runs a program. 
the more cohesive, the more connected your group is, the more you can get done, the more it can amplify whatever it is you're trying to get done. So keep that in the mind as we go through a whole series of these activities in this webinar, is that it is about inviting people to connect at whatever level they wish to engage with that, and that for your purposes programmatically, the stronger, the more willing, the less threatening the environment you can create, the more you can amplify whatever you're trying to get done. And I don't actually mind what your program is, that that performance is still going to be key. So two quick things. I could spend a whole webinar just on any one of those two, but I wanna give that background, particularly if you're new to the work of Plameo or me, there are a lot of people out there at the moment sharing lots of activities and virtual ideas. The key though, is the philosophical framework in which we embed this work that, that is a really distinguishing feature about the, the, not only the training workshops, but the online resources that we provide. Okay, let's come back to me. So let me get a thumbs up from people. Are we ready to play? Awesome, great, I see a lot of thumbs up, which is good to know. Good, good to know. All right, if you wanna get yourself just comfortable, or oh, someone even used a bit of tech and used an actual thumbs up icon on their screen. I don't know how you do that, but uh, kudos to you, Patricia. You just need to get yourself comfortable. You need to be in a space where you've got a little bit of room where you could possibly move. So if you're seated, that's fine if you choose to participate, but I'd like to share with you now a story. And this story involves two key characters, and here's the key. As I go through this story, I would like you to move in one of two ways. You're either going to, and perhaps you use your hands like this, you're gonna point to the left, right now it looks to the right to you, I know, or point to the right. So it's either to the left or to the right, because the story is about Mr. and Mrs. Right. This is an honor system. It'll be take us about a minute at the most to be able to play, and your objective is to get all the way through this story as accurately and as efficiently as possible. Note, if you happen to make a mistake, whatever that might mean to you. All right, shake out the nerves. I can see some of you are a little bit tense. Here we go. This is the story of Mr. and Mrs. Wright. That's your first cue, point right. I'd like to tell you a story about Mr. and Mrs. Wright. One evening, they were baking cookies and Mrs. Wright suddenly called out, oh, there's no flour left. You will need to go out to the store right now. Uh, I can't believe you forgot to check the pantry, grumbled Mr. Wright. It will only take you 20 minutes if you come right back. Go to the corner of First and Second Streets and turn left at the stop sign. Then go to 43rd Street and turn right and the shop will be on your left, declared Mrs. Wright as her husband left the house. Ooh, doing pretty well. Mr. Wright found the store and asked the assistant where he could find the flour. The assistant pointed and said, go to aisle four and turn left. The flour and sugar will be on your left. Mr. Wright made his purchase and walked right out the door. He turned left, but he couldn't remember where he had left his car. Suddenly, he remembered that he had driven Mrs. Wright's car and that his car was in the driveway at home right where he had left it. Finally, he found the right car, opened the boot and put the flour right inside. Eventually, a weary Mr. Wright found his way home. Mrs. Wright had been waiting impatiently. I thought you would be right back, she said. I left all the cookie ingredients on the kitchen counter and the cats got into the milk. You'll just have to go right back to the store again. Mr. Wright sighed. He had no energy left. I'm going right to bed, he said, and left Mrs. Wright standing in the kitchen. End of story. Well played. All right, now here's, um, this is where the rubber hits the road. If you felt at some point you turned left when you should have gone right or otherwise, just put your hand up. You can get a sense, have a look at the uh, gallery view if you want to, to get a sense of that. Great, you're just like everybody else then, well played. You did, you did well. All right, now also, also note, if you haven't already noticed, as you arrived into this room, into this webinar, we did another activity called Wordles. There was also another question before that, that engaged you if you chose. So I don't want you to miss the unofficial start. It is something that I've introduced to the work that I've done and share with my training. And anything, any strategy that you can do that can help people engage productively before you officially start is what I call an unofficial start. So if you're taking notes of, oh, that's a great idea, don't miss those. I've already shared two others, plus now this is my third. So it's just those questions just inviting people to share if they choose on the chat room 
And already people were looking for, you know, I know Nicole out there, you were someone just like me. You know, you happen to find your bed as your paradise. And so immediately we're starting to make connections. We could even, if we're still idling time, uh, open up a chat room or find ourselves into a breakout room if we chose. And of course, the Wordles. That's an initiative, an exercise just on its own, but I've used it today principally as an unofficial start. So checking your notes, you should have at least three different ideas already as we move forward. Here's our next activity. I'm gonna ask you now a series of four or five scenarios. Don't do anything, but maybe note your answers on a sheet of paper. So if you need to grab yourself a piece of paper or pen, or if you've got a, a phone there, you can just log it straight into your phone, but record your answers because you possibly may forget what I've asked you the first time by the time we get to the fourth or fifth time. It's pretty simple. And in each case, I'm asking you to choose. You must choose, you cannot sit on the fence which each of the two options that I give you. So at this stage, you're not entering anything anywhere. Don't put it into the chat room just yet. I'm gonna ask you just to simply note your five, four or five answers to these scenarios. Okay, here's your first one. Your first must choose is this, Coke, Pepsi. So Coke as in Coca-Cola and Pepsi, its biggest competitor. If you had to choose, even if you dislike both of them, which one do you dislike the least? You must choose one or the other, Coke or Pepsi. So don't put it into the chat room just yet. Thank you for doing that, but you don't need to do it. Just simply write it somewhere else other than the screen or the chat room, just for now. You'll understand why in just a moment. All right, you should all have made a choice. It's either Coke or Pepsi, that's it. They're your only choices. Second scenario, must choose between Dark chocolate, white chocolate. Dark chocolate, white chocolate. Which would you go for? Give you a few moments to consider. Each of these questions will get harder and harder as we go through. Okay. You should have two answers now. Third one, video games, board games. Video games, board games. Can't sit on the fence. Maybe you like them both, but one of them, maybe if you had to choose one over the other, which one would it be? Board games or video games? Presently, you're just writing down your own answers to this point. Some of these will be very easy for some, others not so much. All right, that was number three, check your answers. So far you've only put them on a piece of paper or maybe into your phone. Number four, big party, small gathering. If you had to choose, what's your preference? Would you choose big party over small gathering or a small gathering over a big party? Which one would it be? Which one would it be? You will have written down your fourth answer at this point. Okay, and final one, fifth answer. This one will take you a few more moments to think about if you thought the others were tough. Your must choose is between these two, honesty or other people's feelings. Honesty at the expense of other people's feelings or other people's feelings at the expense of honesty. Yes, I know it always depends. <laughs> You're gonna have to make a broad generalization, all things being equal, which one of those two options would you typically choose your preference honesty other people's feelings okay Ooh. okay does anyone need more time okay so here's what i'm going to try to do now because there's for each of those five options 
again, on your piece of paper, I'd like you to consider, you probably know nothing about the rest of this group. I know very little about the rest of this group. If you had to predict the majority preference for this group, what would it be? So to go back to those options, Coke and Pepsi, no matter which one you chose, even if it's different, what do you think the rest of the group as a majority would have chosen? So if you need to do a second column, mark that now as part of your experience. So if you went for Pepsi, but you reckon, no, 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 you're the outlier and everyone else would have chosen Coke, then you write that down in the second column. So for each of the five options, Coke, Pepsi, dark chocolate, white chocolate, board games, video games, big party, small gathering, honesty, and other people's feelings. Give you a moment to predict. And here's the game we're playing. How many out of five can you actually and accurately get? Let's see. Give you just a few more moments. Okay. Last week, when I conducted this activity with another group, I had each person write down a string of their five preferences. That is the first column effectively. We're not gonna do that. I wanna see if I can invoke some of the technology. We don't have a huge group, so this shouldn't take too long. I did set up the polls, and I don't know if this is gonna work, so bear with me. But if I launch the poll, let's see if this works. Okay, go ahead and put in your personal preference. Coke or Pepsi, personal preference, dark or white chocolate, personal preference, board or video games, big party, small gathering, honesty and other people's feelings. Go ahead and I will then end the poll and give you the, the results at the end. Um, as you're doing this, I will say, I've never done this before. Only just learned this feature this morning, talking with a colleague. So I'm interested to know how this all works. So far, so good. Okay. All right. Does anyone put your hand up if you think you need more time? Everyone has done their options. All right, I get to end the poll. I don't know what happens next. Can you see the results on the screen? Give me a thumbs up. No? Okay, well, let me tell you. So you can look at your own. Oh, share results. Can you see them now? Ah, oh, great. Check the results. This is a self uh, this is an honor system, folks. Did you accurately predict the result for the group? That is, if you were Pepsi, but predicted Coke was gonna be the majority, you just got yourself a point. If you did it for all five of them, you just earned five points. The closest in terms of numbers was honesty. We're an honest group here. Just, a little, just edged out other people's feelings by a little bit, okay. All right, I just tried that for the very first time. It didn't seem like a difficult thing to do, but I did need to set up the questions in advance. If you don't have access to polls, and there are a lot of other uh, open video conferencing softwares, I just asked people to list it into the chat room. For example, I'll do it for myself. I'm like this, what was the third one? Uh, oh yeah. I'm just writing in the answers to what I would have put in and so here's the thing, let's say we did it this way, where I asked everyone to, don't, no need to do this, but let's say I did do this for each of the people. Thank you for sharing your scores too, by the way. We did, had some pretty good connections there. The, the Coke Dark Board Small Honesty is the string of my five results. If the whole chat room did that, here's a couple of ways in which I would use that information. One, look for someone who is exactly like you. So right now, Go ahead, I'll just stop the sharing of that poll and get rid of that. Put your hand up if you happen to be exactly the same as me. Coke, dark, border, honesty, small and honesty. No one has a, oh, one or two, three people are exactly the same as me. That means nothing, but it might provide the, the, the stimulus for a connection that we could either go into a breakout room for or connect at some other level. The other way you could do it is find someone who's completely opposite to you. So who was Pepsi, white, video, big party, other people's feelings? 
you know, a couple of people are raising their hands. Again, that doesn't mean anything necessarily, but it might open up a conversation for how you do it. Here's another way before I move on to the next activity. Before I even shared my preferences, I might open up to the group, say, okay, you know a little bit about me now, but do you think I'm a small gathering kind of person or a big party kind of guy? And then the critical, the question, the reflection, which is all part of that experiential learning, no matter the format, online or otherwise, is this. What is your evidence? On what basis did you conclude or make a decision that I was either a small gathering kind of guy or a big party kind of guy? I appear in my trainings and in many, maybe in this setting, as a highly extroverted person. Yet, my preference is a small gathering. And that's not, not wrong or right, but it's about just learning more about the person. I just happen to know how to do extroversion really well, which is why this looks so much better and looks like an extrovert. So there are just some ways. You could use it purely as a way to connect and have a bit of energy being generated, but you can also go a little bit deeper. And as I said, with your permission, I'll keep moving forward for anything that I share today, indeed anything on our database. If you feel like, oh, how does this meet your needs? then shout out, let me know, and I'll be happy to, to, to lead you through it to find some great and powerful connections. It's called Must Choose, by the way. Um, all of these will be given you in, in connections uh, in the email that will follow sometime in the next few hours once the webinar is done, so you can click through exactly to where you can find more details about these activities. Here's your next task. If you happen to have a sheet of paper and a pen close by, Go ahead and grab it. If it's clean, it doesn't matter how big it is. The first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is in really large text, is write your name. If you don't have any paper next to you, don't be concerned. I'm gonna give you a chat room version of this in just a moment. There's two purposes for why I'm asking you to use the piece of paper. One, it's tangible, so I'm inviting you to actually touch something. But two, at the end of this exercise, it'll become a piece of souvenir. It'll remind you of this activity, particularly if it's new for you. So go ahead, just on the top half of a sheet of paper, you've written your name. And then, I'm jumping ahead here, I'm writing a series of numbers. So this is referred to as ID numbers or identity numbers. No need to show yours just yet, but your name will be in the top nice and big. And then you'll put a series of numbers. Now, if I can, I'm gonna try and unmute everybody. We don't have a large group here. How do I unmute everybody? Lisa, do you know how to unmute everybody? Is there a way that I can do that? Maybe people can, it, just, uh, people can just elect. Is it under your managed participants? Yeah, good question. Let's see. Yeah, the icon is uh, like two, two folks, uh, participants. Ah. You need to click there. Ah, there it is. Unmute and, all. And then, right. Now, yeah. if you choose not to, uh, to share, just keep yourself on mute. But I've now unmuted you all. Thank you for that help. So go ahead and uh, mute yourself if you choose not to participate. But you've got your name and you've got a series of numbers. Each of these numbers will relate to you somehow. Yeah. For example, can anyone guess what hey. 64 might refer to in terms of me? Year, 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 year. Yeah, yeah, both. year in which I was born. Thank you. Uh, you're generous. Uh, last time we did this, someone said that was my age. Um, not fair. But 64. 1964 was when I was born. Number 14. I'm going to zip through this just to make it nice and quick for you. 14 represents the number of years I've been married. The numbers are irrelevant so much as the piece that you choose to share. 13 is the street in which I live, number 13, Grey Gum. Number 19 is the number of years I've had my car. I still can't believe it runs, 19. And finally, number one is I have one son, one child. Now, if you were to do exactly the same attributes, for your ID number, the game's over pretty quickly because we'll all be out of guess. The way it ordinarily works is at this point, I might invite you to go into uh, my- Have you loaded two guns? Oh, let me just uh, mute you all up there. I might invite you to uh, go into a breakout room 
and actually share, make sure you connect with each person to try and identify what each of the numbers are. So on this occasion, presuming not everyone would have had paper, can I ask a volunteer in the chat room to write down your name and your four or five numbers when you're ready. And as a group, we'll try to work out what those numbers are. It's not a test, at some point you will tell everyone what it is, but clearly you're only sharing that information that you wish to share. So who would like to give that a go? Who would like to share your name? You could also do it up on the screen, Heather, if you choose. So bring it nice and close if you can work out the video camera. So you've got a four, seven, one, three, and 10. All right, so would anyone like to hazard a guess as to what the number four might stand for? And I'll unmute you all again for that purpose. What does four mean for Heather? First date. Uh, number, of, number of weeks in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> number of weeks in lockdown is a great answer. Number of kids. I didn't escape, we've been locked down longer. Yeah. <laughs> Heather, why don't you go through your numbers? Again, I'm whipping through this fairly quickly for obvious reasons, but sh sh tell us what each of those numbers mean. Four is the number of children I have. Seven is the month I was born in, or excuse me, the day. Um, I am the first child in order of birth. Uh, I have, um, I'm one of three children and 10 is the month I was born in. Nice. Well played. Good. Could we have one more final volunteer who would like to either use their sheet of paper and you can just simply go through your numbers and share what you choose or you can do it on the chat room. I would like to give that a go. You got it. I can uh, share. Greg. Hello. Yeah, so I have uh, the first zero. Anyone, uh, anyone want to guess? Oh, number of children. <laughs> no. Um, okay, uh, hint, uh, it's something related to my outlook. No hair. No hair. <laughs> <laughs> no strands of hair. Six, uh, 16. Uh, uh, the date of your birth? Uh, impossible to guess, number of years I spent in uh, Singapore. Ah, nice. Oh. Uh, next, uh, next zero. Wives. Oh. <laughs> Number of wives was the okay. answer, Greg. <laughs> okay, uh, likely not. So, uh, no, okay, number of, uh, because we, I'm running live team building events and now we have uh, zero team building events due to coronavirus. So I'm learning, I'm studying from zero uh, yeah. in online environment. Sounds <laughs> like me. And what's that big number? Yep. 4114, is it? Yeah. Why don't you just tell uh, us what it is? Date, uh, date and month uh, I was born. Ah, nice and play, Greg. Thank you. So, again, for the purpose of this exercise, we'll keep moving forward, but you get a sense of there's great deals of choice here. You only write those numbers that you choose to be sharing, and they can be really unique, and it provides an insight into somebody. You could do it in pairs, small groups, or indeed, like we can here, manage it really on one or two screens. It can work really well. Got the idea? Thumbs up if that makes sense for people. Sometimes the way I would do it is also add a letter. For example, 64, I might put um, Y to indicate that it's a year. 14 is a Y again because it's 14 years. 13 is S, the street number. It can, be, it can help provide a few extra clues for people to try and uh, understand what it is. And it's not a test. You'll reveal it at some point if you choose. Let's move on. Uh, this one will be familiar to you. I'm having a great deal of fun in the context of it just builds focus. It's a quick activity. And I think there's some real benefits doing it online to when people are there face to face. You don't know this, but Lisa, if you've seen Lisa's, actually, I want to have everyone, if you can see on the gallery view of the screen, can I ask everyone, if you can find Lisa Laura on your screen and then point to where it is, where, she, where Laura is. Okay, now if you point in regards to where it is next to your screen, so it might be above you, might be below, left or right. Lisa is right to my right hand side here. Have a look at the screen, all over the shop. I don't know how that works, it just is. So Lisa and I are gonna be holding a party. 
And to come to this party, your ticket to this party is that you need to bring one thing or one person, one object. And so for example, I'm going to come to this party with an apple. And then when you wish to bring it, just type it into the chat room so everyone will see it. So if you've got an idea and would like to come to this party, and it'll be really fun. And there's gonna be an apple at this party. Who, oh, hang on, let me just see, send that to everybody. An apple. Grass, Heather, absolutely. Could you bring the grass? I would love for you to bring the grass. A cookie, that would be lovely, Kelvin. I love a cookie. Nicole, sorry, can't bring wine, but you can bring beer. Beer would be okay, but not wine. Now, at this point, as lots of people are giving this a go, dogs, no, but you can bring a puppy. A puppy can come, but a dog cannot. That will sound weird. <laughs> you can bring a puppy, but not a dog. There's something about the object that has been brought that allows them to get in. All within the next minute, you'll all understand exactly what this is and we'll reveal it. If you need to, look at some of the answers that people are giving as a clue as to how you might actually be thinking of bringing something. So Flannery, Mr. Flannery would be wonderful to bring. Twitter, yes, we're definitely gonna be all over the Twitter, but you can't bring Facebook. Oh yes, you can. You can bring Facebook. Can't bring Instagram. Or can't use Instagram. Um, Sally can come, but not Peter. Paul can't make it, I'm sorry, Paul. Uh, but let me see who, uh, but Bryce Flannery can come. Uh, Elliot can come. What is it about those people? Like Lisa can't come. Actually, only Collard can come, but Mark can't. What is it about those? So here's an example. So an apple, beer, puppy are all good. But then Sally can come. Um, who else could come? We had Flannery. No, oh, notice, what is it that that's in common here? You would spend a minute or two on this and gradually give more and more clues. I think the benefit of being online and typing your answer is that visually the clue is given away. And for those who are unfamiliar with this exercise, the key, the key to this particular exercise was bringing an object that had two consecutive same letters. So A, double P, L, E, B, double E, R, but not Y. Uh, umbrella, yeah, it's gonna be wet. So you need to bring your umbrella, double L, A. There are lots and lots of different keys. That's one, but again, if you're using it purely to invite people to uh, engage, focus, have a bit of fun, and see how creative they can get if you really wanted to, to uh, stimulate them in that, in that sense as well. All right, so that's come to my party. And I, it's been working really well at engaging people for a couple of minutes uh, in an online context. I'm gonna sh share my screen again for this next exercise. You should still be able to hear me. And let me, okay. Okay, you should all be able to see this green screen now. All right, just give me a thumbs up that everyone can see a green screen. And there's this object in the center. It is a piece of software that I'm presently showing to you that has a randomized set of cards. This exercise uh, we, is- You can't it, see the green screen. You can't see the, see the white screen. Right, thank you for sharing. So what's going on there? All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and just come back out of that and see if we can try that again. How are we doing there? Is that better? Yep. Uh, thank you for letting me know, Greg. Well done. Too many things open, I think, on my machine. To repeat, this is a, an exercise that a group would want to be able to solve a problem. And it's a, in this case, I'm pointing you to an actual piece of software that has a random set of playing cards, a regular deck of playing cards, you know, the, the suits of hearts and diamonds and so forth. And here's the task. And it's surprisingly difficult, even though it sounds very, very simple. Is I'm gonna ask a couple of volunteers to 
tell me if I can work this out at the same time, if I can unmute you all, unmute a whole lot of people. So I'm unmuting a whole stack of people here so that you can participate. I'm gonna ask you to tell me what the next card is not going to be. So you need to predict what the next card won't be. So long as it's not the card you predicted, the group gets to proceed to go forward. And so the problem that needs to be solved is, as a group, how can we get all the way through 52 or 54 cards? Now I can tell you, my family went on a vacation to Costa Rica for about a month last year. Every time we were waiting in line in an airport, bus station, uh, restaurant, we pulled out a deck of cards and loved playing this game. But it is truly a group initiative. So for example, um, Paul, if you could just guess, and I, I, we should be able to hear you, tell us what you think this next card won't be. The Ace of Spades. All right. Oh, good. All I did was click the screen. So we get to continue. I will say last week when we did this, uh, the second card was predicted. We didn't get very far at all. All right, let's see. Um, Greg, could you tell me the next card? What it won't be. Uh, six uh, hearts. Okay, or well, you could just simply, don't even bother with the suits, it could just, just a six. So it's just the, the, the regular value. So it's a jack, don't worry about the suit, or it's a six, don't worry about the suit. So you're gonna go for a six? Yep. Excellent, great. Ah, man, how did it know that? <laughs> Let's start again. So I'm gonna refresh it and we'll start again and we'll ask someone new to try this. So I don't know, I, the screen is not showing me all your names now because I've come off that. So could someone just nominate Maybe Lisa, because I think you're unmuted. What do you think the next card is going to be? King. Ooh, there's that six again. All right. Someone else. Three. Oh, that's three times in a row we've got it on the second card. That's crazy. <laughs> I swear this is not meant to happen. But you can see the engagement and also what's happening. Like, wow, how did we get that? So let's just do this one more time. Uh, Paul, are you unmuted? I think you are. Paul, give us a, uh, what do you predict the next card won't be? Five. Seven. Okay, so we'll go five. And the next one, the other Paul, I realize we've got more than one Paul, is a seven. Five. Ooh, good. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't know. Someone just uh, randomly offer a suggestion. Five. Say that again. Five. Oh, okay, good. Keep going. Green. Next. Two. Yeah, I, I heard an eight. Oh, next. Two. Next. Three. Oh, good. Now we're getting somewhere. What are we up to? About eight cards so far. Let's do two more. Ace. One more. Jack. Ah, okay, good. Good work, folks. So, again, just a little bit of fun in terms of uh, inviting people to contribute to, to an exercise, which ordinarily you'd have to have the cards in front of you. Now, you could still do that, but you would need to be able to still see the cards. So last week when I played it, I actually showed a physical card to the, the camera. And I thought this week I'd just try it again. It was a wanting to share with you and I will give you the link for this particular piece of software, but you, can, you may be able to see it in the screen. I don't know, but it's random-cards.com and it's a piece of free software which you can use uh, for your purposes. All right, now I need to get myself back to sharing the screen. Uh, okay, there it is, stop sharing. Back to me, great. So that's called prediction. And I picked that up along the, along the ways uh, from a number of different places and a really fun game that you could just play in pairs. So if you wanted to and had the ability, break into small groups and issue them the same challenge, but show them one place where they could all focus on a set of cards or give them a set of cards that they can just simply show to the camera for the purpose of that exercise. I'm gonna show one more to you. Again, I'm gonna share a screen because this is where I've got a call out for help. 
Um, this is an exercise that you'll be familiar with. And I am challenged to find a way that it can actually be introduced online. It works at one level where the group can verbally <laughs> instruct one person to, uh, to be able to solve the problem. But I want to be able to do it so that everyone can see a mirrored image of what's going on. So let me just share the screen to bring us back to that point. Okay, let me just quickly check. Do you see a relatively blank screen and uh, a series of words at the bottom of the screen? Give me a thumbs up if that's what you can see. Okay. Yeah, we got it. For some of you, you'll be familiar with this being referred to as word circles. The object is to be able to link all of these 13 cards into one overwhelming relationship. That's normally how I brief it. And the way it works in the face-to-face -face world, I have a series of cards in front of a small group and they can move them around. So what you'll note is the ability that I can use my cursor to be able to move these words around. So I'm looking for relationships. So a tool door, yeah. I know I've got a tool shed that has a door, but that's not the same thing. Is it a Christmas tool? That doesn't make sense. But there is a Christmas tree. And then what does a tree connect with? Well, it's a tree top. So I'm not going to go through the exercise here, but the way in which the activity would ordinarily work is that people would manipulate the cards in front of themselves tangibly. This is a screen that you could help me actually solve the problem. So for example, if, I could, if you want to unmute yourself, what would top link to? Step. Step. Could you say that again? Step, top step. Top step, okay, let's just try that out. What could step connect to? Father. Father. Step father, yep. yeah, great, okay. And father connects to? Man. Father man. <laughs> Father power. <laughs> Father power. Oh, <laughs> Let's keep going. Power tool. Power deck. Power deck or power tool. Tool shop. Tool shop. Where is shop? Okay, so you've got the context. Again, I want to respect your time. So as a group, you're assisting me. I'm the only one that can touch this. My question to you, I don't need an answer right now, but stick around at the end of the webinar and I'll then share it with everybody. Do you know a piece of software where everyone in real time, so when I move the word shop, everyone is able to see it on their screen, but then you might choose to put shop back where it came from. So everyone is able to shift all and manipulate all of the objects in a, in a real time mirrored fashion. Um, so if you happen to know something of that nature, but I wanted to share this. This is called Flippity. Uh, as it sounds, flippity.net. It's completely free. They give you the instructions to be able to do it. I've tried stuff like Google Slides or even some PowerPoints. The problem with that is that uh, people can then change the words. They can make the, the boxes different sizes. So I'll throw it out there in the context that this might be something that you can solve. And if we have got a solution, uh, I'll check that when we get towards the end. So this is called word circles. Again, one of the activities that you can download, you can just cut these straight out and use them tangibly with a group. And this is me wanting to experiment with how would I do this online. I'm close, but what I would love for everyone to be able to do is to every person in a group have the ability to manipulate it in real time. So I see there's lots of chats going on. I'll, I'll come back to that shortly to, to have a look at that in a moment. All right, I'll bring us back here. So that's the word circle. So what have we done? Six, seven or eight different activities now. And I'll bring you back to the point. Inviting, intentionally inviting people to connect. Make it fun, make it non-threatening and provide ample choices. There are dozens and I've already, we've been adding descriptions for at least 50 or 60 different activities online that can be embraced in a virtual environment. And I'm just using some of our favorites that we've been playing with. And with your permission, trying some of this out for the first time. Never done a poll before, so just tried that out. Never used um, the, this Flippity thing before. So Flippity.net, I'll just write that in there so that everyone can see that. 
if you didn't understand how I say it. Flippity.net. Oh, that's not it. Flippity.net. There we go. Folks, we're going to wind up in the next 10 minutes. And for those who have the time and are willing to stick around uh, for a Q&A long after the top of the hour, you are welcome to stick around. We will stop the recording or at least edit it at that point. But I will stick around for as long as people want to stick around and ask questions. And so forth. But I would like at this point to now share with you some resources that goes beyond the six or seven or eight activities I've shared with you to give you access to a whole lot more. And for that purpose, I want to share the screen again, brings us back to here. So first of all, oh, let's play. The first thing I want to share with you is the app. If you've not come across this before, this is completely free. Um, this will give you access to dozens and dozens of activities that in most cases don't need equipment, but can be used to help your groups connect. It's completely free. There's no in-app purchases. I'm never even going to know about you. Uh, but it's basically curating all of the free content from Playmio into one place. And of course, it's in your hand. And we're seeing this may be in your business too, an increasing demand for stuff uh, in a mobile context, which is why we developed the app uh, some years ago. So uh, just plug in the word Playmio uh, into your screen uh, of your favorite app marketplace, and you'll be able to download that. The other part too I want to give you free access to is our online database. If you've never come across this before, um, this will probably become your next best friend. Uh, presently, there's over 400 activities that are of a group context. And of course, until recently, everything about this has been about when people actually turn up face to face. So I'll share the screen again to then show you a different Go back to that screen or I can actually show this to you live. So not that one, but this one. You should be able to see now the search activity screen. So this is playmeo.com. Um, you can see all these lovely little pictures that just give you an illustration of the activity. Presently, there's 402 activities. We have been cranking it the last couple of weeks to adapt as much of this database as we can to a virtual setting. So if you go to the filter, which is in this space here, you'll notice there's now a virtual filter. It will take those 402 activities. Presently, we have 54 that have been adapted. So for example, if you go down to uh, here, here's the ID numbers, the one that we did before. You open that activity, it gives you a quick summary of the experience. It does show that there are virtual options. Um, these are the tabs. All these give you more information, such as the step-by-step -step instructions. Everyone will have access to this at the end of the webinar. But if you go down to the virtual adaptation tab, which is new, it takes what you already know about the activity and gives you ideas about how you would adapt it online. A little bit like how I demonstrated it today. We have that for 54 activities. Um, each day I try to find time to update another two, three or four. So gradually every day there's more and more that we're adapting for that purpose. So this is of particular interest to you at the moment. I think we all understand this will pass. This would be a really valuable resource for you and you get access to this for free. So I'll bring you back to where we were before, but this is the search screen. And if you've not come across it before, there are lots of ways in which you can uh, filter the types of activities you look for, the number, how long you want it to run for, how many people, the level of exertion. And of course now, oh, I'm only looking for activities that come with a video tutorial. About two thirds of the activities do, and that's by far the most valuable asset of our database is the uh, videos that we have of real groups. Anyway, I'll let you in your own time play with that. Let's stop the share and bring ourselves back again. So that is one of the resources I want to be able to share with you that would be of value. The next part is here. This is a, an offer that we have for all of our webinar participants, whether you turned up or not. If you use that coupon code in red, uh, it will expire next Monday, which is the 20th of April. Uh, it'll give you, first of all, a complete unlimited trial for seven days. Won't cost you a cent, seven days unlimited access to all of the database. And then if you choose to continue it, so note if you, oh no, I just wanna kick the tires, I wanna play just with the free stuff, note it in your diary and then cancel. But then if you choose to, it'll be half price subscription, um, particularly in these times where I know pretty much all purses are shut. 
this would be of benefit to you. So if you've never dabbled with our resources before, this might be a great introduction. You go to playmail.com, sign up, and then just enter that coupon into the checkout when asked. As I say, it will expire on the 20th of April, uh, and feel free to share this with your colleagues if, if, if there's value in that. Thanks to Lisa, uh, one of our team, we now have a new Facebook group that we've created. We've called it Interactive Group Games and Activities. Um, so either search for it or wait for the email that will come to you and it'll give you a link where you can just join. Uh, naturally, it's free, but the focus entirely on the conversation, and it has been extraordinary collaboration already. I think 300 people have joined. Um, a great collaboration of people asking questions, a bit like what I did today. Hey, how do I find a resource that allows people to manipulate stuff in real time in a mirrored environment? And some great stuff has come up. That's how I knew about Flippity, for example. So if you're into Facebook or not, here's a, a great safe place for you to share and learn from others in that um, interactive group games and activities. And Lisa and I are moderating that for our purposes as well to keep it uh, really healthy. And two more resources, folks. Uh, these are organizations that we love and align from a values perspective really, really heavily. Um, Chad and Will at We and Me, they're called. Uh, this is a website that you can check out. They've got a ton of free resources that you can download. That's all about creating uh, connections through conversations. In fact, uh, we are hosting a web webinar with Chad and Will in two weeks' time, so look out for that email where they'll share creating conversations that matter um, in, in, in that context. And then many of you perhaps are familiar with High Five if you're from North America, Adventure Learning Center. Um, like us, they're not doing any training at the moment, so they are full bore in creative mode. And so we're spending a lot of time collaborating, creating all sorts of new ideas and resources. And uh, I'd like you to know about them if they've never come across, if you've not come across them before. As I say, all of this is going to be shared with you in the video afterwards, um, whether you've turned up or not. Um, and we've got a few minutes before we officially close the webinar. I'll go ahead and unmute you all. If you have nothing to say, just go ahead and mute yourself or unmute yourself if you wish to ask a question. Um, but stick around after the top of the hour and I'll, I'll continue to answer questions even though the webinar will have complete. So over to you. Questions, folks. Raise your hand so I can then call on you and perhaps uh, unmute you. So, Paul, got it. Uh, unmute, unmute you. There you go. I can, do it. I can unmute myself. Um, hi, Mark. Um, good to see you. Um, and um, thank you very much for all that. I've been taking extensive notes, as I'm sure everybody else has. Great. Um, just one question. I've, I've messed around with things like poll everywhere and, and separate programs. And I, I didn't know how, how you were doing the polls. What magic are you using uh, for that? And I'm, it, this might be a very basic question and everybody knows this, but yeah, how? Yeah. It's only basic to those who know it, <laughs> Paul. Uh, yeah. I learned literally two hours ago with Chad from We and Me, because he was doing polls. I said, how do you do it, Chad? So I think you probably need to have a premium subscription to Zoom, I'm presuming because I haven't seen it on any of the free stuff I was doing until recently. But with um, what I'm looking at is the toolbar of my screen and it simply says polling. Now, in advance of the meeting, I created those five questions. So in advance of the meeting, I created five questions with each of the options. And then once the meeting started, I clicked the polling button. I chose which set of questions I wanted to show you. And then of course you were able to participate in it. So. As I said, that was my first time, uh, full disclosure, uh, and it seemed to work pretty well. Good question. Thanks. Another question, folks. Hi, Matt. Is it Coach Kim? Yeah, Kim here. Hi. Kim, how are Malaysia. you? Hi, good. Hey, I have a question. Uh, you know, every time when you share your screen, right, uh, when you do a presentation, you share a screen, uh, when we do that, we are focused on the screen, but I am not able to see the visual, the body language of the participants. You know, I'm not seeing, I'm not sure whether they, are they focusing, are they listening to me, you know, uh, they are loose them. So how do I go about managing that? Ah, uh, uh, there may be others in this call that will know the answer to this better than I do, but if I go first, um, I've, I've just flicked between a gallery view, which is in the top right hand corner of my screen and speaker view. Now, I do know that while I'm on speaker view right now, um, you know, I'm seeing you, but there's a, there's a list of as many as six or seven at the top of people 
and their little video windows. And when I go back to gallery view, of course, the whole screen is filled with lots of gallery windows. So oh, okay. you're right, I don't think, and if you're in really large um, uh, webinars with hundreds of people, it would be impossible to see them all on one screen. So today's okay. beauty was the intimacy of, you know, pretty much everyone fitted on one or two screens. Thank you. Which is lovely. So I hope, hopefully it helps Kim. Maybe some others have got some better answers. Folks, it is one o'clock. I am going to stick around for those who wish to. Um, but can I again just say thank you. I really want to acknowledge taking an hour out of whatever day, night it is for you. Um, I will commit to getting that email to you. Whatever you registered with is the email we will send to you with all of the resources, links to all of the things we speak of and a reminder of the special offers uh, that you'll get access to the entire database, at least for the next seven days or whenever you start it um, before the 20th of April. So that's coming. So thank you for coming. Give us a thumbs up. Did you get at least one idea out of this or this sucked or whatever it is? Give us a sense of what happened for you. Um, that's great to see. Thank you for those thumbs up. So I'll say goodbye. This is the point where we'll actually edit and stop the video when we do share it. Uh, but I will stick around for all those that have uh, questions. Feel free to leave now if you choose.